The U.S. government hates Americans. Notes from the Edge of the Narrative Matrix. Best wishes to Americans this July 4th as you celebrate your great nation's revolutionary transition from being ruled by a king to being ruled by corporations. The U.S. government views the American people as an annoying distraction from its real job of managing a globe-spanning empire. They couldn't be more obvious about it. The only thing keeping Americans from seeing it are the media spinmeisters telling them daddy loves them all day. America's armed goon squad filled a man's body with 60 bullets while he was unarmed and running away, and the narrative managers are telling Americans to worry about Russia and China. The governments of Russia and China are mobilizing as though the U.S. centralized empire is plotting to conquer and subjugate them because that's exactly what is happening. Find a government who loves you the way your own current government loves spending your money on a U.S. proxy war in Ukraine. It is good that the last two U.S. presidents have been slobbering idiots with holes in their brains. You never want the world's most evil government to have a charming face. Once you understand how much power is riding on Washington's ability to maintain the political status quo, it doesn't look the slightest bit paranoid or delusional to assume that all mainstream U.S. politics and media are being deliberately tilted toward that end by the powerful. Like, ooh, yeah, it's so crazy and conspiratorial to think powerful people might be involved in manipulating politics and media in the hub of the most powerful empire that has ever existed. It's so fucking obnoxious how the U.S. keeps pretending it's following Ukraine's lead in order to obfuscate the fact that it's clearly the exact opposite. There's an antiwar.com article. White House says U.S. won't push Ukraine to negotiate with Russia. The Western Empire deliberately provoked this war, refuses to do anything to help end this war, actively discourages its puppet regime in Kiev from ending the war, and plainly benefits from the continuation of this war. They're destroying that country and then blaming the victim. The correct response to, ah shit, the ecosystem is dying, is not, therefore we'd better entrust ruling power structures with even more power so they can fix it. It's, therefore, we'd better overthrow the ruling power structures whose madness created this problem so we can fix it. People are getting their life advice from chronically miserable freaks like Jordan Peterson and getting their foreign policy opinions from chronically wrong pundits who lied about the Iraq war. Don't take life advice from miserable people. Don't take career advice from unsuccessful people. Don't take relationship advice from people who can't maintain one. Don't take creative advice from people who don't create. And don't take foreign policy advice from Iraq war supporters. I wrote and tweeted about abortion for days after the Roe decision using the words women and woman the entire time, and no one objected or told me to say birthing people or people with uteruses even once. The majority of my readers are leftists. The women are being erased culture war talking point seems to be a made-up crisis. Most of what I do here is document propaganda trends and how they're affecting the way people think and communicate. When propagandists get going, I very quickly see their talking points regurgitated in my comments section. This simply is not happening with language about women. A few liberal institutions are using more inclusive language now, but it's not affecting the way people think and talk about women, so it's silly to claim it's hurting us. There are many, many obstacles and abuses women face in our society. But a smattering of trans-inclusive language is not one of them. Stop getting sucked into culture war brain quagmires. People get so mad when I talk about what a sleazy propagandist Tucker Carlson is. It's like they think I'm talking about their friend. Don't form parasocial relationships with your mass media pundits. That's gross. Whenever the news cycle gets me saying lots of things my rightist followers object to, I always get a bunch of hysterical reactions claiming I've changed or I'm losing my mind. Really, it's that they'd been following a leftist and agreeing with her the entire time without noticing. Human biology is not separable from this planet. In the future, if there is a future, the field of medicine will treat the entirety of Earth's biosphere like it now treats the individual human organism. We won't colonize space. We'll enter a collaborative relationship with our ecosystem. 
People would be faster to abandon the false hope of space colonization if they weren't perceiving life through egoic consciousness which creates the illusion of separateness. We can send food and water into space, we can imitate gravity, but we can't replicate the earth element in human anatomy. Without the separation illusion, it's clear that the biosphere is an energetic field, not a collection of separate things, and that snipping human organisms out of that field and putting them in space makes, them as, much, makes as much sense as taking a ripple from a pond and putting it in a fishbowl.